so I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. You see, as the title would suggest, let's play or read a fault milestone one. I'm not sure how to start this off other than you're about to see where this character comes from and the game which truly made me get into and do YouTube. I'll explain more when we uh, get to it. Hello, hello, hello. Tuta here, come in, dug in our search bar. To bring you another video. But not of a video that is known to what, or I say known, what is not common of my channel. My channel so far has been nothing but war games. Which and strategy game, which I'm okay with because they're fun. However, long time ago, back in 2015, 2016, I started doing live streams and it was of World of Warships constant, just back to back, two live streams a day, two hour live stream, take a break, another two hour, and just go constant, constant, and then add in every uh, different other games here and just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, and nothing was really. Man, World of Warships would get anywhere between three people watching to at one point I had 40 people watching, which was crazy. But then I saw something. This. Fall Milestone 1. And I haven't really done a visual novel at this point in time. 16 year old me was still new to the whole fucking streaming and YouTube thing. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Downloaded the demo, played the demo, instantly fell in love with the story and decided, you know what, I'm going to try and stream it. Little did I know it would become the most popular thing on my channel at that time. Unfortunately, said channel has been deleted because it kind of died to death. It's kind of like what this one's doing at the moment, but I don't care anymore because when I was younger, I... I don't know. I guess I had no, no idea what I was going to do with YouTube and stuff anyways. Now I know exactly what I'm going to do with YouTube anyways. And that is post a video when I feel like posting videos and enough games I like doing. Because I have a job that is keeping me self-sufficient, so I don't need to worry about any monetization or ad revenue. Which is pretty cool. Plus I'm more mature and understanding on how shit works. But I already have this game on my channel. Thought milestone one. It's in the, it's in the uh, playlist. Now, it is far from perfect. <laughs> I had barely an idea how to fucking say words, and it was in a live stream format, so you would have pauses here and there, which is cool. However, I feel like doing a video format of this. I think it'll be a lot faster to get done because it says it's only a four hour game. It took me two weeks to get through it. This is a story game. I will be reading. There will be no gameplay. There's only one choice in it and it doesn't matter what you choose. And this is probably not going to be as popular. But I want to get to do this because of two things. One. Something's happening in April involving this series. Two, back in 2018, when we were still waiting for the prequel to this, Fault Silence Dependent, they did an update to this. They had these, this new HD graphic and everything done. And I tried to do another playthrough of it, I just, and I just stopped. 
Now I've got all the achievements and the trading cards three times over. So, this game is a lot. I, I, this is one of my favorite games. It's got me into visual novel and it's just, just awesome. It's just one of the few games that drive me to tears and I'll try not to tear up at the point we get to it. Now, there's a slight spoiler on this screen, but I'm not going to point it out. Let's just say, after completing it, something is added. And, uh, can't change it here. Now, I can continue on all this because I've gotten... I guess it's all gone. Hmm. Anywho. I could go through the gallery and show everything. It also has a music gallery, which is awesome. And there's the art book, but... I've talked for five minutes. I should probably get going on into this story. The music is fine. There is no voice acting for this one and the second one. So it will be me just reading. I will try my best not to do monotone voices. But I cannot change my voice. The only thing I can do with my voice is make it go deeper. I can't, can't make it go. Nope, can't make it go higher. It screws my voice. So I can't do that. So it will just be me basically reading a book. So feel free to put this on in the background and uh, listen as I tell you the story of Fault, Milestone 1. In time of yore, humankind discovered mana, a naturally occurring energy source that long pulsed, that long pulsed throughout the crust of the world. Humankind utilized mana f from the land to craft and create any and all. The art of manifesting mana from known as mana craft. And practitioners of this art became known as mana crafters. I suck with words, so I'll try my best. Oh, I guess I have to click. Awesome! This wasn't this was automatic at one point. A hunter could use pyrocraft to kill and cook their catch or quarry. An apothecary could use aquacraft to increase the potency of their healing potions. A carpenter could use terracraft to strengthen the foundation of a home. A farmer could use aerocraft to improve the crop output by manipulating the wind. There also exists a unite uh, exists a mana craft which was hetero uh, hereditary. Never. Help. Hereditary. Unique only to certain individuals. Path down. The path down used mana as a medium to transfer the memories and experiences of the present ruler to the future heir to the throne. Humankind would deem those in possessions of heredi hered hereditary mana craft to be monarchs. The propagation of the old king's wisdom through past down was evidence enough to uh, cement a country's reputation as a formidable mana craft monarchy. Big words. Centuries ago, hell bent on expanding their sphere of influence, the mana craft monarchs started the period of exploration. Even the great seas were no match for their ambition. The result of Manacraft for large-scale warfare exploded, fueled by the need for conquest. The populace survived, but drove one monarchy to expansion. The stagnated economy, the reason for another, ambitions drew many others. For a few Manacraft monarchies that successfully survived, the countless number of lives were sacrificed to maintain. In the present day, the development of mana facilitated communication revolutionized an already altered world. This form of communication was known as Comcraft. People were no longer restricted to the pace of couriers to carry written messages. Long distance communication became accessible to the masses. Education and knowledge became abundant. Secularism grew in popularity among the general public. Enlightenment was abundant in this new era ushered forth by Comcraft. Rosenhide, renowned pacifist kingdom of Sanna Andrea, further prevailed from Comcraft's convenience. For nine generations, Rosenhide prospered from perpetual pacifism, but even the wisdom of the old kings cannot prevent tragedy from befalling this kingdom of peace and order. Tragedy would ultimately end peace that was established over 60 years ago. Blood splatters across. This was new. No, wait, no, it wasn't. 
This looks more better. Welcome to Rosenheiden. Or welcome to Rosenheide. <laughs> I have to say it in German because it looks like German. I love the soundtrack. Now, I could turn off it for monetization, but I don't monetize. Rosenhide Castle, passageway to the Sky Terrace. Sparks continued to dance throughout the air as, small, as a small silhouette descended the spiral staircase. First to the Sky Terrace! The first of the attackers to reach the Sky Terrace on the roof of the castle was a young girl, no more than 12 or 13 years of age. Hmm? She quickly scans her surroundings and gets into a defensive pose. Holding her breath, she surveys the area for a while. According to her prior intelligence, the Sky Terrace was completely deserted. Except for one. Hmm. Path down successor of Country of Rosenheide. Selfine Rosenheide. Show yourself. You know there's nowhere for you to hide now. The girl shout reverberated uh, throughout the empty terrace. There was no one around, but she maintained her guard. These were the actions of someone who's done it a countless number of times. She moved towards the center of the Sky Terrace with a mechanical efficiency which betrayed her small, delicate appearance. Hmm. Is there really no one here? Maybe the intel is wrong? Sam, can you hear me? Sam, if you can hear me, respond. Is she in the middle of a fight? No one's here. The girl lets her guard down and takes a deep, long breath. Hmm. Further in the terrace was a balcony that also functioned as a viewing deck of sorts. It was designed to overlook the town around the castle. There was a large wooden dining table that was situated in the middle of it. The table was furnished with an ordinary, ordinary woven tablecloth. This one, the new CG uh, that uh, they added in the 2018 update, and it looks so much better. It was surrounded with heavy, solid wooden chairs, and atop of it were numerous identically made ornaments. The table and all of its amenities were works of art. Every object, from the dining table to the decorations, strategically placed throughout the Sky Terrace, screamed of wealth. Something crossed the girl's mind, and she sets the chair at the head of the table upright and sits her small frame onto it. But she really is tiny. For a moment, she's taken aback by it all. It was truly the height of luxury. The view she had from the head of the table, having grown up in meager circumstances, was impressive beyond her imagining. Hehe. <laughs> Slam. In a display of terrible manners, she rests both her feet on the table and reclines against the chair, slowly closing her eyes. <sighs> she couldn't help but laugh at the disparity between the situation and the place where she had grown up. Whose seat was this? Under what lucky star would you have to be born under to be granted the privilege to sit yourself in a chair like this? Hmm. Well, not that it mattered. This chair was no one's. Just like this crumbling castle was to be no one's as well. I'm sure it'd feel wonderful if I could have a meal on a table like this. From the balcony created to look upon the town below, the girl gazes at the townscapes at the blaze. The perfect view. Just perfect. Ha. <laughs> this is just stupid. After her rather mindless soliloquy, she gets up off her seat, then... Ah, girl number two. Another girl appeared from the door that she had broken through just earlier. Miss Marisha. The girl dressed as Marisha waved a hand in a yo pose as if she was joking. Coco, you like chair? Sitting? Same girl posed a question to her partner in a rather broken speech. N no, I, not really. As always, she doesn't have a shred of tension in her, so Coco thought, keeping to herself, Marisha, 
In terms of age, she and Coco were not far apart. In contrast to Coco's rather belligerent look, she looked like a sweet little girl who had no place in a miserable battlefield like this. However, a great many have been deceived by her innocent looks. Their blood, now stained her dress, certainly stood out. I'm surprised you can just waltz around like that with all this going on. Hmm? An imaginary question mark appears atop of Marie's shelf. She's trying to say why Coco was so astonished. No reason to rush. Of course you rush. Just walk around with all this going on is weird. The castle was filled with the smell of blood and smoke. Screams and explosions continued to roar throughout. Despite the cacophony going on all around them, Rachel simply stood there, oblivious to it all. Already almost done. No point running. Well, that's true, but... Cook was at a loss for words when she faced that simple retort. She... not here? Uh, no, she's not. Ugh. Can't rely on Cian's info? Cian... reliable. Even if wrong, we follow... sister's orders. You mean, orders. Orders. Unflinching. Rather than communicate with words, she stuck the same hand-waving pose from earlier. That was one of Marie Shell's ways of expressing herself. Still, if they aren't here, where could they be? I'm pretty sure we searched everywhere. Plan B. A manual search? Oh, what a pain. The sheer size of this place makes my head spin. He, <laughs> he, funny face. Oh, leave me alone. Fine, plan B then. Let's stick to the plan and take one wing each. I'll be on the swing. Michelle nods. What's wrong? We look. Yes? Won't it spell Shadow Soldiers? It'll be fine. Only, I'll be fine. There's only 150 of them. Probably taking care of most of the rear line soldiers, so I don't run into anyone troublesome. <laughs> uh, what is it? Overconfidence. Your weakness. The voice was soft, but carried. But the words carried weight. Everything going too well. Won't forget that. I, I won't. Kakao unconsciously stood at attention. Or stands at attention. Nothing wrong. In being careful. That's all. Th that was scary. He suddenly flips into serious mode and all. Other people probably wouldn't understand the sudden change in Michelle's attitude. Putting thoughts and emotions into words is a weak point of hers. Logical, seeing that she only recently began remembering her vocabulary. However, though her vocabulary is lacking, she is in no way unintelligent or unable to grasp the situation at hand. Kako, being her partner, understood this very well. Hello? Hello, Coco! Can you hear me? Hmm? Ah, saying. Yeah, I hear you. How's it going there? You done fighting? Third floor downstairs has been uh, committed. As long as people don't suddenly start raining down from the sky, no one else should be able to get into the castle. Oh, and get a load of this. Recently, the last guy just killed. There were such pushovers. Kind of ruined the moment. Like, I, I'd get more of a thrill from dreaming in an afternoon nap. Coming from someone who personally said she just kept guard. Can't really complain if you didn't volunteer to head up to the front lines instead. So how are things going on your end? Ignoring me, hey? Oh, right. This place is totally empty. You've got some explaining to do here. You sure the princess is in the sky terrace? Absolutely. If she isn't around the balcony, then she's got to be somewhere on the top floor. Look harder, why don't you? Uh, looking around is a huge pain. It's so tiring. You sure are lazy for someone so young. I don't want to hear that from someone who volunteered to show up our defenses. Oh, quit complaining. Just get looking. Already on the home stretch. Get off my back. Really, though, this whole thing sure was a breeze, eh? Rosenheide's the center of the alliance and all. It's supposed. Is it supposed to fall this quickly and easy? Well, Miss Milano's planned it out this much. She even taking part in it too. Well, let's be honest. It's probably mostly because of the latter than anything else. What? You mean we 
all couldn't have gotten this far without the help of the Shadow Soldiers? No, that's not, that's not what I meant. Considering Miss Milano, I bet you could probably take down an entire country or two. If I had to describe her in a single word, it'd be cheater. You've got a point. Anyways, I'll go back to committing the entire castle in Tidigar. Good luck with the search! Yeah, see you. Between Miss Rachel and Sian, why is there anyone who's feeling more tense than I am? And I've uh, totally lost my drive too. Damn it! Just as she finishes her call. Huh? What? Huh? Cookout stuff was made from a metal alloy. It was made to prioritize lightness, but metal is still metal. A swing from any old sword would certainly nick it, but there's no way it could slice through it so cleanly. What, what was that? There's, there's something stuck to the wall. A transparent knife? Ooh, here we go. Best character ever! A blade of ice? Or perhaps some kind of illusion using craft? In, in any case, it doesn't change the fact that there was some kind of unknown threat. Who goes there? Show yourself! <laughs> Out of the darkness emerges yet another girl. One of their retainers, perhaps? She was wearing a formal looking outfit with her entire body wrapped in a purple cloak. However, what first caught Coco's attention was the badge shining brightly on her collar. The badge served as proof of the individual's rank as a crafter. Duel! The title of Duel Crafter is only granted to those who have mastered two of the four types of mana, Pyro, Aqua, Terra, and Arrow. But the girl standing before Coco could not have been more than 20 years of age. She was likely in her late teens. I believe she is 19 to 20 years old, if I remember correctly. To become a dual crafter at 18, 19 years of age was quite a remarkable feat. Ratona Ravenstaff. She is the last descendant of the Ravenstaff family, which has served as the royal family's guardians for generations upon generations. But Kalko had no way of knowing that. Where did you come from? What's your objective? Why are you after Princess Selphine? Huh? <laughs> Let's get one thing straight here. This attack of ours is completely in our control. Whether you all live or die, that is up to us to decide. Do you understand? Your tone is having none of this shit. The only thing you can do is stare back at us and answer every question we've got. Oh well, if you want to die, then that's another story. Very well. Ah, right, seeing as uh, you're dressed, that means you're one of the servants here, right? You ever know where Selfie is? And what if I do? S seriously! Alright, I'll cut you a deal. Tell me where she is, and I won't kill you. Mm, I see. And if I say no? Oh, well, if you don't tell me, then I'll kill you. I suppose that makes things nice and simple, doesn't it? So, that's what you're getting at? You've been trying to make him fool me the entire time, haven't you? Right now, with the way things are going, aren't you just so scared that you've completely snapped? You're getting on my nerves, trying to smack, trying to, yeah, you got on my nerves, talking smack to me one more time, and I'm seriously going to kill you. Princess. Huh? It's Princess Selfie, you disgraceful brat. Ratona had been trying to play cool in her in collected, but there was a slight rage in her eyes. I don't know what you wish to accomplish by attacking the royal family, but to address the princess of the country that way shows a complete and utter lack of respect. Such brazen behavior shows that you lack in morals as well. What? Enough talk. Have at you. You only steer us into conflict regardless, so let me teach you rules of my own. Did you hear a single word I said? What, you want to fight me at a time like this? Or what, just because you're a duel, you think you can take anyone on? Are you an idiot? Do you have absolutely no common sense at all? A tail like that doesn't mean squat outside of the Alliance. 
I'm God. Whoa. No, is that glass? A glass sword? You really expect me to fight with one of those? Maybe with one of those? Is that so? What of it? You're nothing but a glass worker. An artisan crafter. You seriously think you can put up a fight with me? Enough, you little brat. You're nothing but talk. I swear you call me little brat again and again. Stop treating me like a kid or I'm gonna get or you're gonna get what's coming to you. Why is she attacking? She's stalling for time? Hell if I know who you are. But I don't have time to deal with the likes of some stupid artist and crafter. Clack clack. As Kako can you scream at the top of her vo voice, uh, she knocks the tip of her staff against the ground, causing a triangle just large enough for a human to appear beneath her tone of feet. What? A range attack? So she's not a battle crafter. I'll kill you with a single hit. Die! Triangle incineration! This is also new, actual movement. Bless! In a split second, a column of fire roared out from the triangles toward the sea. Too slow! Get! We're trying to circle around Coco. Rear. It makes contact with Coco's back. Gah! The next moment, Coco dashes away with all of her might, trying to put much distance between her and Ratona. Hmm? She quickly checks her back to assess the wound, but. Huh? It isn't cut. The sensation of her spine getting sliced in two slowly fades away. What just? Coco understood at that very moment. Retona's sword isn't some decoration. Or a fake weapon. But it is in fact a real weapon. A strange and highly dangerous one. Transidian. That's what the sword is made out of. Transidian? It's a material said to hold the sharpest edge in the entire world. Of course I know that. But the way Transidian breaks off is too uncontrollable. They say it's too dangerous and impossible to forge into weaponry. Only if it's naturally occurring. But I've already applied some level of processing to the Transidian I create. I can freely control this material. Are you stupid? If you can make something just as complex as Transidian, then why don't you just stick to something tougher and easier like metal? Hmm. Glass, metal. As long as it cut through anything, then who cares? You're making even less sense now. Why the hell is some artisan like you even fighting with a sword in the first place? You still haven't realized it. It's a little slow on the top take, I see. I'm a battle crafter. Fatona leaps off the ground. <laughs> She's getting close. I need to keep my distance. Shadow, so uh, shadow soldiers. And another new... CG. Freaking amazing. The shadow form of the staff stretched, and dark silhouettes of soldiers began to fall out from the ground. Mm -hmm. Three, four of them. Suddenly, Rotona was surrounded on all sides. What the? Shadow soldiers? She can summon them at will? So she. She's the one who created the shadow soldiers who attacked him. Why is it so hard for me to say shadow? Probably because it's a mix of soldiers. Careful, everyone. This girl's really fast and her sword is super sharp. And don't get anywhere near the commit area. Kako then raised her staff, generating what seemed to be a wave of mana in air. The mana slowed in the air, then went straight to the dark soldier's hands. Pyro, Terra, Forge, Chains! She knocked, against, she knocked her staff against the ground twice, causing the glow of mana that had been floating in the air to materialize into chains. First, I'm going to tie you down. Now! <laughs> now you're trapped. You and your stupid acrobatics. This is the end for you. Kaka and the soldiers. And the shadow soldiers had Tona tied up in chains. Surrounded. And then. Pentagram incineration! Kaka using her staff. And the soldiers using their jet black swords all slammed the ground at once. Small glowing points appeared within light, raising across them to draw a large pentagram beneath the tone of seat. Bless! Hmm? Cool. Pillar light disappears. 
a triangular burn mark was on the ceiling. Besides, it was a much larger star-shaped hole in this, uh, with the night sky and full moon in view, shining bright. <laughs> I burned her into, uh, I burned her into nothing but ashes. The shadow slips didn't budge an inch, leaving her perplexed. Then she realized. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Depending on how you handle Transidian, you could even cut through steel. The shadow soldiers are vanishing? Which means that as long as you cut them down, then you can still defeat them. No way. Some kind of glass that lets you cut through steel? That's cheating! Something doesn't add up here. You, you're no battle crafter, are you? Your triangle pancreas attacks certainly weren't lacking in power, especially the second one. Had I taken the brunt of that blast, I'd like to be nothing more than ash by now. But the activation, bless, takes far too long. Anything that takes that long would be completely unsuitable for battle, no matter how strong it is. Your style of fighting's at distance. Why do you persist with such strange tactics? Oh, shut up! If it works, then who cares? Damn it! Her hand gripped her staff. Began, her, her hand gripping her staff begins to quiver, frustrated at the turn of events. Why is someone this strong just plundering the castle? Well, well. In any case, I suppose you understand now that you have no chance of winning. I'm not at all disappointed. Disposed of? Uh, I'm not at all disposed to fighting, if at all possible. I prefer to settle this conflict with dialogue, but. You aren't going to listen, are you? The feeling of the sword slowly fades away. Uh huh? Kako was flabbergasted at Ratona's disappointment of a statement. Then. <laughs> Here's something else, you know that? Kako realized something. That she had the upper hand. That Ratona would ultimately not attack her. She sneered at Ratona's invitation. <sighs> Kako uses all of her might, striking Ratona with her staff. Ah. Make a complete mess of your country, your hometown, <laughs> and you want to talk? Are you a freaking moron? Indeed. This is not the time nor place to exercise Ratona's pacifist views. Ratona understood that very clearly. She could more than easily have taken Kako's head if she wanted to. Even after getting to her back twice, not once did she. Ratona herself had resisted the urge to take her life. The overwhelming difference in strength was absolutely meaningless in the face of Ratona's greatest weakness. You have nothing on me. When it comes to combat, I'm clearly head and shoulders above you. And yet here you are, still struggling desperately against me. Who's the fool now? This is seriously pissing me off! You think you're so high and mighty. You're telling the person who killed your friends, your comrades, that you just want to talk? Hey, tell me. Is this so wrong to take a life? If it means protecting someone you can't live without? What? Hey, answer me. What's the difference between me and you? For just a moment. I was shaken for a moment by Coco's bruise. And I lost concentration. She wasn't tired to make that kind of mistake. Not in the slightest. Unbelievable. Indeed. Even if Ratona had no intent on taking someone's life, she would never slip and let her attention waver from the battle. Someone must have been toying with her from that moment. Someone. Someone right behind her. Commit Breaker. What? The sword in Ratona's hand shattered into tiny fragments. The commit. Did you reach your chan mana change all of a sudden? When? Let me introduce you. That's my partner on the battlefield. Miss Marichelle. Marichelle strikes her yo pose once again. Coco, make new shadow soldiers. Yes. That's why I said, should dispel. New soldiers. Balance is bad. I I'm sorry. Why you? What did you just do? Destroy? Commit? Commit breaker. Don't be absurd! 
The moment Ratona understood the current situation, she shudders. Cocoa crafts are powerful, but take a while to bless. And her partner, who compensates for that. Perfect combination. She will get killed because she took too long. Because even when given a chance, she didn't kill Cocoa. My lady, please get down on the ground. Uh, okay. Our Ratona signal, the glass wall at the edge of the room shatters. Glass, which bent light in severe, uh, and served as an optical camouflage. Selfing had been hiding the entire time, and now she was exposed. Huh? Selfie! So fast. What, what the, the mana here? Maybe this is shift? Huh? A shift? Selfie, please close your eyes for a moment. A vortex of wind enveloped Raton and Selfie. Cacao! Get out! Now! The next moment. What? Huh? Hey, hey, what? Hey, just what? What the? What the heck was that? Just. They. Vanished! Dot, dot, dot. Eek! Oh, wow, I got that high. <laughs> Eek! Uh, what? Where is this place? What the? A forest? This isn't the rendezvous point. I, I, I can't believe it. We actually got out of there. Where are we? H hey, Ratona. What happened back there? Where are we? How about the castle? Everyone. I don't know. Our Concraft Grand Line was cut the same time the attack began, so I haven't been able to contact the rear line soldier since. But, but since I got into the castle, that means... Yes. That having been the last stages of the attack likely means the townspeople and soldiers might all be done. Oh no. Still, this doesn't make sense. They weren't aiming for King Valor, but specifically for Princess Selphine. They attacked us when my father was out. I can't believe this happened. They targeted Princess Selphine right during the King's absence. That's right. The fact that the King's not around is a highly guarded secret. Not even the common citizen should know he's out. And they were aiming for Princess Selphine. Does that mean... No. King Val is already... What do we do? The, the comm line's been cut. We need to find a way to get in contact with my father. No. What proof is there that this is really happening? It's just me overthinking. There's just far too many unknowns from the conversation earlier. The only thing I'm certain is that this was their intent to assassinate something. If it's someone to take a life, it means protecting someone important to you. What could she have meant by that? Trying to lower my guard? No. She didn't seem like she was lying. And there was that other girl, Risha. She's definitely a crafter on a whole nother level. That artisan. Kako as well. That pentagram shaped mana synergy. She was alone, so her bless took longer to execute, allowing me to respond quickly enough. But if the two of them were working together to attack, then. Ugh. In any case, I got more pressing issues to think about right now. Hey, hey Ratona? What should we do now? Please calm down, Princess Selphine. For now, we just need to get ourselves together and find out just where we are. Huh? What do you say? You use your mana craft to bring us here, right? What do you mean we need to find where, where we are? Ratona, please, tell me. What's going on? What is happening? Me. Huh? Ratona? Forgive me. Huh? Why are you apologizing, Ratona? There's no need to. Forgive me, my lady. Despite the situation being as it was, I rushed into using the last resort as an escape. Please forgive me. Please. What? Something's mine. 
uh, Selfine's mind went blank from Rotona's sudden barrage of apologies. Rotona had the respect of many for being incredibly capable and talented, and always kept her cool. Ever since they were children, she was the person Selfine looked up to the most, next to her parents. The very first time in her life seeing Rotona losing her composure to this extent. R R Rotona? <laughs> she mustn't let the princess feel uncertain. That much she knew. But the girl of glass couldn't so much as raise her head. Still in shock, Sophie pulls Rotona up. And the very same realization fully finally dawned upon the two girls. That this was the end of their peaceful lives and the beginning of a harsh journey. Oh, I love this intro. With the stray effect, that will do it for part one of chapter one. I hope you all enjoyed this reading of the story, and I try my best I have to be better at reading this stuff, mainly because I would like to do more visual novels. This one is just one of my favorite ones, and with it being updated, even though I already know how the story ends, which like my last one, I'm going to be an asshole at some points in this. I want to get practice for doing more visual novels. So please, let me know how this how this is. And, um... I'm going to be doing more, and I will be continuing to do this because my channel what I want to play. But this does not mean I'm going to stop doing, say, like, Yuba, which I need do a patrols and get that back ongoing because we got season two in the Baltic. Anywho, this is Two Tall Saints. Thank you for joining me on this Let's Play slash Let's Read Fault Milestone One. Stay safe and as always, have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. <laughs>